Patrick for Tyndall then. That's all the sport for now. See you later, Mike. Thank you. I want to take you back to the situation at the Chilean mine because, of course, they're getting closer to breaking through to the miners. My colleague Tim Wilcox is at the mine. And, uh, Tim, what's the latest? Maxine, in the last 20 minutes, Lawrence Goldborn, the mining minister and a senior spokesman from the Home uh, Ministry, have just arrived here. We are hearing they are just moments away from breaking through. Uh, there's a big fog descended on this mine, but you can see all the press, all the families have woken up now, all of us prepared, full of expectation of this announcement that Plan B has drilled through that 630 metres it needed to get through to the workshop below. They then have to decide whether they're going to line it. But once they finally break through, we're expecting the sirens, the klaxons on that drill to sound as they did about a week ago when they hit that 300 metre mark, because this is a very, very significant moment. This is stage one of a stage two rescue operation, which will lead to these men coming out after 65 days. We'll be bringing you all the latest from the San Jose mine, but that is the latest at the moment, the arrival of the mining minister and the Home Office spokesman. The president's wife is already in the area. She came last night. She's due to spend three or four days here in total. That would suggest that the uh, ascent of these men is close. Tim, thank you very much indeed. So that's what's happening there, and it does seem to be a very exciting moment indeed. Joining me in the studio is Dr Jennifer Wilde of King's College in London, who's a consultant clinical psychologist. Um, and Jennifer, you specialise in post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, right. uh, they're very close. What, what will those men be feeling at this moment? They'll be feeling a lot of excitement, um, a lot of anxiety about um, what, whether they'll get through the tunnel and without any difficulty. So we don't know that right now, whether the tunnel has to be cased, and so the men don't know actually if they're coming out today or if it will be 10 days from now. So there will still be some anxiety around that. The, the fact that they've had to take part in the operation, removing debris and, and getting themselves prepared, does that help in a situation like this? that helps to keep them focused on getting out, which is very, very important. We don't want them to be focused on the fact that they've been down there and that the worst could have happened, which, which would have been um, not getting out or rescued. So helping their rescue operation is very important. It keeps them focused on the solution and on getting out. We were hearing earlier that there will be an order in which they bring people out. They'll bring a, a few of the strongest out first so that the shaft can be tested and a stronger person would be able to deal with perhaps a problem if they got stuck in the shaft. Then they'll bring out the weakest people. So you're standing in that line and you're waiting to leave. What, what are you feeling? What's going through your head? What's going through your head? Please get me out. Please get me out. Um, I hope I can get out and there will be no problem. Um, they are bringing the healthiest men out first and I think that's a good idea just mm. to test the shaft and also the resilience. Um, when they get them out at the top, we've seen some of the, the facilities they have in place for them, including sunglasses because of course it will be very bright. But, but what, what help will they need mentally when they get out initially and then over a long period I suppose? Yes, so those are two separate issues, what they need initially and then what they need in the long term. So initially, it, what we would recommend is watchful waiting to see how the men cope with being on top, how they cope with being out of that mine. And then after four weeks, we would be looking for symptoms such as intrusive, um, terrifying memories of being stuck underground, um, avoidance symptoms, avoiding being in enclosed spaces or in dark rooms, or the very um, unpleasant hyperarousal symptoms, which are feeling very jumpy, overly alert, not being able to concentrate, feeling very irritable. If those symptoms are persisting for more than four weeks, then I'd be very concerned that, that these men are at risk of post-traumatic stress disorder. But in the first four weeks, it's just watchful waiting that we would uh, be doing. And we're watchfully waiting, of course, for that breakthrough, which we expect 